I think I am ready to discuss our next topic, which was actually an article that showed up in the Wall Street Journal um, earlier last week, I believe, um, that talked about uh, kind of like the culture clash of having the CEO of your business live in another city than the city in which that business is headquartered. So the example that came up in this article was uh, Brian Moynihan from Bank of America. The bank is headquartered in Charlotte, and Moynihan, uh, he came into the company with Fleet Boston, with the Fleet Boston acquisition, and he still lives in Boston. He likes Boston. He doesn't want to leave Boston, and he doesn't want to move the headquarters to Boston or New York, where there are a lot more um, executive officers because of the uh, the acquisition of Merrill Lynch. Um, do you want to do you want to kind of run with that? Yeah. So, I mean, the thing about you know. Bank of America is that it is a collection of a bunch of regional banks, and if you and if you really break it down, it's a collection of Bank of America, the namesake, which was a bank founded in 1904 out in California. There's a bank called Nations Bank, which is actually when when we think about Bank of America, we're actually thinking about Nations Bank, and that is a bank that was based in Charlotte, North Carolina, and it, and it really take traces its roots, its modern roots, back to the 1950s when it decided to try to grow into one of the biggest banks in the United States. And then the third big piece of that puzzle, and there's a whole bunch of pieces to the puzzle, but these are just the, the really big ones. The third big piece of the puzzle, other than Merrill Lynch, um, is Boston Fleet, uh, Fleet Boston Financial. And so what's interesting is that, you know, and, and this is typical at a lot of banks where you're going to have all these executives come in as a result of these mergers and acquisitions. But what's so unique about Bank of America is that whereas before the crisis, that top executive team always stayed in control of the, that New York or that North Carolina contingent. Since then, it's fallen into the hands of Brian Moynihan, who's a Boston executive. Right. And he's now filling the executive ranks with people that he worked with at Fleet Boston Financial. And so now you have their executives that are split kind of evenly between you know, Boston, where its wealth management operations are based or in that area, New York, which is where its investment banking operations that acquired from Merrill Lynch are principally based, and then Charlotte, where the traditional headquarters are. Well, the problem is that Moynihan, the CEO, still lives in Boston, so he's commuting all the time yeah. down to Charlotte. And so when you think about, you know, as a company, thinking about a company that you want to invest in, the, qu you, the question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to invest in one? And I'm personally a pretty big fan of Brian Moynihan, but it's, this is a, it's a legitimate question for investors. Do you want to invest in one where the CEO is not even willing to make the commitment to then move to the headquarters city, i.e. Charlotte, North Carolina? And the one company that, I, that, you know, that comes to mind when you're talking about this issue is J.C. Penney. J.C. Penney brought in a guy named Ron Johnson. Um, I think it was in 2011, if my mind serves me correctly. And he, he came from Apple. Apple's, he was the head of Apple's retail division. And he went through all these changes at uh, the Dallas-based uh, JCPenney, but he never moved down to Dallas. And that always caused consternation among the people at JC, among the folks at JCPenney. And he was eventually almost drove, drove, drove JCPenney's into bankruptcy, and he was, eventually, he was eventually fired. Now, I don't think Brian Moynihan is going to do that at Bank of America, to be very clear. However, the point being, it is not a good precedent as a general rule to have your CEO living in a, in a city that is not your headquarters city. And I think another component to think about this is that Brian Moynihan, he's not, he's not flying economy class back and forth from Boston. <laughs> like us? <laughs> yeah, like, like me this morning. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, he's definitely not flying like we travel. <laughs> no. Shout out to the guy sitting next to me who had chips spilling out of his pocket, like just loose potato chips this morning. Like, I don't know <laughs> who are you. I don't know who you are, but you go. You, you do you, sir. Um, no, they have private company jets. Um, I believe that the figure stated was that Bank of America spent something like four hundred forty-eight thousand dollars last year on flying CEOs back and forth on their private company jets. Flying Brian Moynihan. Oh, just Brian? Just Brian Moynihan. I'm sorry, I'm talking and about like was, I know him. <laughs> just yeah, Brian. it was like it was like leaps and bounds more than other bank CEOs. The, so you're, what you're talking about? You're talking about personal miles that he rung up on the company jet. And the reason he rings up so many personal miles is because every week it's got to take him back home to Boston. Yeah. And so, you know, in the whole scheme of things, is the corporate jet cost going to sink Bank of America? No. I mean, you're talking like this is a negligible cost for a bank that size. No. But when banks, banks are required, all companies are required to report the type of compensation that they give to their executives. And this isn't something that's 
really factored into that and people I guess don't really think about that but like the cost of having a corporate plane that your executive has to take has to use to basically commute every week or limo drivers or dinners people get like people don't really think about that in terms of compensation but people people do get a lot of stuff a lot of extras a lot of side benefits perks they do and 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 no perk is better than a than a company plane and and just to be clear i'm not saying i'm I'm not saying that um shareholders shouldn't care about this because they absolutely should care about this but it's my opinion that they they should care about the company plane they should look at that as more of a symptom of the issue as opposed to the issue itself. The issue itself is, do you want a CEO of a company who is not willing to live in the headquarters city of that company? I mean, I, you know, I, I have no doubt that Brian Moynihan is willing to make a lot of sacrifices for Bank America. He's probably worked a lot of hours over the past decade um, at that bank, um, but it still sets a bad precedent. Right. I will say that the that the just to play devil's advocate, um, maybe they maybe companies do this so that they can attract better talent. Someone who says, you know what, I'll come work for you, but I don't want to leave my home, my home city. And this is this is the bargain that you get as a result of having my talent. Yeah. But these guys also get paid tens of millions of dollars. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I guess if so that's what they get for their talent. <laughs> I guess if you're a football player, you're not going to be like, yeah. you know what? You know, you just have to fly me into Miami every week. Like, it's not going to (laughs) happen.